What's going on YouTube? Snowflarky Zemos here today with another deck profile. Today I am bringing you my modern day Dino Rabbit deck profile. As a fan of normal monsters, I love everything normal monsters and such. I've always had an affinity for uh, the Dino Rabbit deck. A deck that uses this card Rescue Rabbit to summon out two vanilla dinos and then make the powerful Evolzor XZs. This was a very powerful deck a long time ago, but uh, you know, it is not been much of a thing now but i still like to make modern versions of it every once in a while to bust out with the uh, local dual group and it's just a very fun deck captures that essence in the modern era let's take a look at the cards starting off i am playing three of the iconic rescue rabbit rescue rabbit of course a level four beast monster with a pretty simple effect uh, you can't be special summoned from the deck but you can banish this card Face up, you control to special summon two level four or lower normal monsters with the same name from the deck, but destroy them at the end of the turn. So we can get out two normal monsters of the same name, which means they'll be the same level and we'll be able to make an XZ. Our main target for this, of course, I am playing three copies of Saber Saurus. Now, I will say that Megalo Smasher X is the objectively uh, better choice, but I really like to show off this playset of secret rare saber sources I have from Joey's World because it's uh, one of my favorite looking cards and it's uh, just pretty sweet. Uh, so saber source of course has 1900 attack and it's a dinosaur and has four stars which is important. A nice attack stat, four stars to make our XZs. So and we play three copies of this because you know if we get one in our hand we still want to be able to use the rescue rabbit package. Next up. I'm playing three copies of Soul Eating Avi Raptor. This is uh, the main Dino Searcher. It's an 1800 attack dinosaur, four stars. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can take a dinosaur monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to your graveyard. Uh, it has a second effect that involves popping a card to special summon a dino from the graveyard, but we don't really use that one in this deck. So uh, he's mostly just in here to be a searcher. Now, it seems weird that uh, we might be playing a searcher because we don't certainly want to search Saber Sore out of the deck. So who are we looking for? Well, and that is three copies of Flower Dino. This was kind of a pack filler card a couple sets ago, but when I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, I could use this to do a more slow version of a dino rabbit strategy in the modern day so it's a four star 2000 attack dinosaur it can't be normal summoner set but it must be special summoned by its own effect and you can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn if you activate a trap card or effect or your opponent activates a spell card or effect you can special summon this card from your hand if this card is sent to the graveyard you can target a banished spell you can target three banished spellers traps place them at the bottom of the deck and if you do draw a card so uh pretty cool the little guy right there uh when we play a trap which we're going to play a lot of in this deck or our opponent plays a spell or a card effect we can summon him from our hand which is pretty nice uh and but that's pretty important because you know the modern dino rabbit strategy doesn't have a ton of ways to vomit out dinosaurs on your type of a field and this is more of a trap stun style deck that also just adds the evolves or monsters on top of it for extra pain so basically if you got a floodgate to delay some time you can summon your avi raptor put flower dino in your hand likely get flower dino out on your opponent's turn and then on your next turn, you can use them to make Evolzors. And that becomes possible with some of the powerful floodgates we're playing in here later, like Summon Limit and stuff like that. So just a pretty good card for this slow strategy and gradually building dinosaurs over uh, two turns as opposed to one. And for my last monsters, I'm playing three copies of Jurat Gwaiba. One of the main reasons I can't put down this deck, because this is one of my favorite cards historically. Jurat Gwaiba, it's a 1700 four-star dinosaur type monster that says if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon a Jurat monster with 1700 or less attack from your deck. And of course, it cannot attack this turn. So another target we can search with our soul-eating Avi Raptor, of course. Jurat Gwaiba destroys anything. He summons another one out. That gets us two materials to lay into an XZ. Uh, you could, in theory, play a fourth Jurak monster to, uh, you know, basically keep the chain going to be able to use it twice. But uh, we already have a lot more monsters in this deck that kind of clog up the hand. So, uh, you know, three, perfectly fine. And that is it for the monsters.
Next, going into our spell cards, I am playing two copies of Xyz Import. This is a really fun card to play in decks with the Evolves because you can target an XZ monster you control and one monster your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to your XZ's monster, and then you attach your opponent's monster to that card. Works super well with uh, good old Dolka here because he will take a monster and then that gives him another monster effect negation, which is just super incredible. It's a quick play spell too, so you can play it during your opponent's turn to disrupt their plays. Just a very nice card. You can only use once of it per turn. But uh, yeah, just put some other targets on Dolka and get more negates. Next up, one copy of Dimensional Fisher. Pretty cool card that we can play. We don't care if our stuff's getting banished, but a lot of opponents will because any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Just a nice little continuous... Uh, spell card that we can use. Old Dino Rabbit used it and it's still useful today. Next up, I'm playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance. Now I know we're risking banishing our Evolzors, but that's okay. We'll just max out on three copies of each because we want that card advantage. Pot of Extravagance banishes three to six extra deck cards randomly face down and you draw a card for every three that you did. So uh, yeah, pretty nice. That gets you one extra card, and this card doesn't generate a ton of advantage like modern decks, so that extra card really does help. And lastly, I'm playing two Pot of Duality. In this build, we're not necessarily vomiting out any Volzor on our first turn every time, or every turn. Uh, basically, not unless we have Rescue Rabbit or Gwaiba online. So we need to Pot of Duality, dig through our deck, maybe look for a Floodgate or two, because the Floodgates are really what's going to slow things down for this strategy to really take hold. And that is it for the spell cards. Next up, looking at our trap cards, I am playing two copies of Macro Cosmos, uh, getting these cards back up on the Forbidden list more uh, recently is definitely a nice boost to this deck. Macro Cosmos is just a trap card version of Dimensional Fisher, except instead of being only monsters, it banishes all cards, which is generally better. The only difference, of course, being that we can play D Fisher on our first turn and have it active on the first turn, which sometimes matters. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but two macro cosmos just a nice little stun card we can play next up Three copies of summon limit. Yep a special for just about any stun deck summon limit is just an incredible card that will Slow down the game so that combo does not run over you and when things are slowed down the strategy really takes hold Because it becomes real hard for your opponent to deal with your evolzors and your other trap cards while they can only summon two monsters so it just makes it so either player can on only summon two monsters so once summon limits online you're not going to really be able to rescue rabbit into the evolzor keep that in mind but it works really well for using soul eating avi raptor and then of course playing summon limit on your opponent's turn taking that moment to summon your flower dino from hand that counts as a summon during your opponent's turn then on your turn you can make an exe and still normal summon a monster so it uh, is pretty good stuff uh, three copies of Summon Limit, incredibly powerful. Next up, I am playing three copies of Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment is an incredibly powerful card in this deck. Protects our evolves, protects our floodgates. Uh, we pay half our life points to gain a summon or a spell or trap activation. Pretty dang good. I'm also playing two copies of Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike allows us to pay 1,500 life points to negate a special summon or an effect monster's effect when it activates. Uh, pretty good card. Definitely worth 1,500 life points to get that kind of negation in the deck. I'm also playing one copy of Solemn Warning, just something I have kind of been playing again because it's a kind of cool card. Uh, pay 2,000 life points to negate a normal special summon, a normal or special summon, or card effect that would special summon, of course. And uh, that's just pretty cool because Solemn Warning is really strong in combination with Summon Limit because if you negate that normal summon, it still counts towards their Summon Limit. You know, if they just try to play a card and you Solemn Warning it, so you immediately remove a monster and they can only summon one monster, very unlikely they can do anything. So just a good little card that I'm trying out. Next, I'm playing three copies of Storming Mirror Force. Storming Mirror Force is like any other Mirror Force card. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, you do something to their attack position monsters. Storming Mirror Force bounces them all back to the hand, so that gets around monsters that can't be destroyed or things like that. Um, honestly, 
Uh, regular Mirror Force might be fine because a lot of those indestructible monsters are harder to get at when Summon Limit's on the field. But in case Summon Limit's not on the field, Storming Mirror Force is just a good option. Send them back to the hand, uh, you know, have your opponent try again. And this is very important for when you want to protect your smaller dinosaurs before you make your evolves, whatnot, etc. Uh, next, I am playing one copy of Bottomless Trap Hole. Just a nice little extra removal to have in here as a one of. It just one for one removes a monster, which can be pretty important. Uh, you don't have to wait for the battle phase, so reaction. Uh, you know, you can switch this card out for anything else. Crackdown or whichever you want to do. And last, I am playing two copies of Heavy Storm Duster. Heavy Storm Duster says target up to two spells or traps on the field and destroy them. We can't use our battle phase this turn. So this is for playing against other decks that are using back row, spell and trap cards in the back. Uh, we don't necessarily want to lose to that. So being able to plus by destroying two of those cards is great. Uh, even if you just go one for one, that's fine. Especially if it stops them from searching, which is nice. And, uh, you know, just a good card. If you're not playing against spell and trap card based decks or things that you're using back row, feel free to swap this for another trap. And that is it for the main deck. Going into our extra deck, I am playing three copies of Evolzor Lagia. The Evolzor XZs are, of course, the big payoff to a Dino Rabbit strategy. They're rank 4 XZ monsters that require two level 4 dinosaurs to make, and they have very powerful effects. Lagia has got 2400 attack, and its effect is Solemn Judgment. You can attach two materials from this card to negate a normal or special summon or a spell or trap card activation. So that's pretty cool. Uh, very powerful card right there. Next up, I'm also playing three copies of Evolzor Dolka. Requires two level four dinos, got 2300 attack. And of course, uh, during either player's turn, you can detach a material from this card to negate the activation of an effect monster's effect and destroy that monster. Uh, that's nice. We get two monster effect negates off of this card because it only detaches one material. It's not once per turn. It's not once per chain. So you can use all of these right away. Just incredibly powerful card that is going to give a lot of opponents a tough time. For the rest of my extra deck, I'm just playing decent rank 4 stuff that I have on me. Uh, here's one copy of Baguska. It's a rank 4 XZ that you put to level 4. G special summon in defense, and all monsters go into defense position, and they can't activate their effects while they're in defense position. This card loses a material during each of your standby phases. Uh, so, you know, if we need to buy a couple turns, we can summon Baguska. It's kind of like a little skill drain can buy us a turn or two, especially with uh, Floodgate in tow, if we want to, you know, get a little further into our deck. Next, I'm playing a copy of Divine Arsenal A. Zeus. Definitely max out on this card if I had three copies, but it's a pretty good XZ. Um, so when, your XZ, when you have a battle phase where your XZ monster battles, uh, you can throw this card on top of the XZ in main phase two, and it gets a quick effect where you can detach two materials to send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. So just a very powerful, annoying, disruptive tool, and uh, you know, a lot of XZs where you've spent a material or something, you can just throw him on top and use the two materials, one of them being the XZ, of course, to get a disruption very nice. Next, I'm playing two copies of Tornado Dragon, 2100 attack, two level fours. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach a material and destroy your spell or trap card on the field. So it deals with those pesky back row decks. Next up, I'm playing two copies of Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer, 2000 attack, and we can detach two materials from this card to shuffle any other face-up card on the field back into the deck. Um, it also can detach one material to do a Book of Moon effect, but it's not a quick effect, so you mostly just use that first effect when you go into it. Next, I'm playing one copy of number 101, Silent Honor Arc. This is a really fun card to play with XZ's import. Uh, because it requires two level four monsters, you detach two materials to target a face-up attack position monster your opponent controls and attach it to this card as material. And what makes that nice is so you can detach two, steal a monster, then you can use XZ's import to steal another monster on your opponent's turn, then it has two materials again to steal another monster. So just a very fun card to play with that spell. Next up, I'm playing a copy of Abyss Dweller, 1700 attack, two level four water monster. Once per turn, during any player's turn, you can detach an XZ material from this card. And when you do that, any card effects that activate in your opponent's graveyard cannot be activated this turn. So, you know, graveyard based decks don't like this card. You can make it, give them a heck of a time. And the last card I'm playing is one copy of number 82, Heartland Draco. 
It re uh, requires two level four monsters and has the effect uh, that you can detach a material from this card. And this card can attack your opponent directly, but other monsters you control cannot attack. Nice little card here because it's got 2,000 attacks. Sometimes we've been burning our opponent out a little bit, a little bit at a time. And, uh, you know, maybe they've summoned a defense position monster that we can't get around now. Well, we can just ignore it and use Heartland Draco to attack for game. Uh, certainly something that comes up every once in a while, so it gets that last spot in my extra deck. And that is it for my extra deck. So, that is it for my Dino Rabbit deck profile. Like I said, it's nice to just have this deck for uh, busting it out at Casual Duel Night and, uh, you know, constantly updating it to still kind of hang in there in the current landscape of Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, it's a solid deck, you know, not certainly not a tournament winner, but uh, you'll certainly get some wins against your friends, and that's mainly what I use it for. It's very fun to, uh, of course, make the Evol XZs in a slower base strategy. If you like that kind of thing, I'm a big fan of it, so that's why it speaks to me. And, of course, I just love getting to have these beautiful Saber Swords on the field. Using Flower Dino is really cool. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. Let me know. What do you think? I'd like to know if you played Dino Rabbit back in the day. I actually wasn't playing around the time of Dino Rabbit's heyday, so I really missed the era to play this deck and uh, stomp with it. But, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's still pretty solid. I appreciate you checking out the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.